Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. But there's something wrong in the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Hello, friends, and welcome to The Secret Podcast with Sixth Sense Media and Service of Change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II. This is The Secret Podcast, the show that challenges reality, questions at which we've been taught in hopes of inspiring a new direction of thought to bring about change, making the paranormal feel quite normal and the supernatural quite natural. On this episode of The Secret Podcast, we have a fascinating show, a fascinating guest that's going to be on, my friend Rose, also known as The Happy Medium. She talks to the dead. I cannot wait to get into this discussion with Rose. I've wanted to get her on the show since we first met. I'm fascinated by what she is able to do, and I'm looking forward to this conversation and explaining a little bit more about her unique gift and how she uses it to help other people. One of the things I want to get into, including the news, some interesting AI stuff that uh, is out once again. As you know, I've been tracking that story uh, don't forget to check us out at sixcentsmedia.net. That's the new website. Of course, serviceofchange.com is still up and running. And don't forget to sign up for the secret newsletter. Right now, it's available through serviceofchange.com in the process of moving that to the new platform at sixcentsmedia.net. But it's the best way to stay connected. And, of course, you can track this show. There's an archive. I think this is episode 128, 129. Uh, all those shows are available for free. They're on iTunes. They're on SoundCloud. They're on Google Play. Uh, tune in radio and pretty much anywhere else you can get a podcast right now. Definitely check it out tonight. I'm going to talk about some things that may, especially if you're a new listener, they may challenge you a little bit. They may make you uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean they're not true. It doesn't mean they're not possible. I try to do a good job of quoting my sources and laying my groundwork uh, in all of my show notes through the websites and, and in each episode, I try to link my sources as well. So please, I encourage you, I invite you to check out the uh, the wealth of free, entertaining content, interesting content that's out there, and, and join in the discussion. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear some comments. Don't forget, check us out on Facebook. Ray Davis is uh, the king of social media lately. He's just blowing it up with uh, Sixth Sense Media, facebook.com slash the Sixth Sense Media, and on Twitter, it's at six underscore sense underscore media. I'm getting constant news updates all day long from the work of uh, my partner in crime, uh, Ray Davis. You know, he's the other co-founder here of Sixth Sense Media. The stories he's coming up with, things he's finding, I really feel like, uh, you know, I have my my finger on the pulse of the world with with the Twitter alerts that he's got going on. And the discussions that we're having in uh, our, our groups through Facebook and social media, really great stuff. If you're interested in... in uh, you know, I, I hate using the word paranormal now because it does feel truly normal for me. But paranormal, supernatural, um, you know, but even some political stuff and just the state of the world uh, and, and where it's at. We're just trying to take a different look at it, a different approach through, uh, you know, one with hope, one of peace, one without spreading fear. We spread information, but we don't spread fear as our motto states. Bettering ourselves, bettering each other, and bettering the world. Okay, commercial's over. You know where to find us. Let me go through my checklist here this Friday evening. Before we get started, there's a couple things I want to talk about. As you know, we've been doing the remote viewing experiments here on the show. I've had some really good success rates with our cohort. I invite you to join into it. I'll have another set of target coordinates at the end of this show and, and through the websites and everything. Uh, and I'm working on building a platform through SixthSenseMedia.net where you can go log in. You can get the uh, the court. You don't even have to log in. Just go to the website. You'll get your coordinates, your target coordinates. And then once you're done gathering your data then you'll be able to go get the feedback and see what the target was. That's what I'm working on right now so we can continue to develop this ability. But I wanted to experiment with it myself. Uh, you know, just the last, uh, was it about three or four days ago, I lost track of time because with all this snow, we had so many days off from school and work. It's been crazy. But I, I want to share some of my personal accounts. As you know, I've been I've been working on this sixth, sixth sense, my sixth sense. I've been trying to develop my intuition and my connection to things for quite some time. You know, getting Reiki certified really helped me to uh, to expand that. But you don't need to have a Reiki certification to tap into your intuition. Um, I've really been looking at the remote viewing lately. So I did my own remote viewing session. Now, you know, there's, there's different types of remote viewing, different ways that you can do it. 
you should always be blind. You should not ever know what your target is because then you have the possibility of having data front loaded into your into your consciousness. But I wanted to do an experiment, and I wanted to see this weekend. I'm not a football fan, uh, but because the team's in the playoffs, uh, I watched the game last weekend with my kids, my wife, and my mother, and we had a, we had a fun time. So we're planning on watching the game this weekend. Uh, the home team, the Philadelphia Eagles, are playing the Minnesota Vikings this Sunday evening. And I said, you know what? Let me do an experiment. And it's called associate remote viewing. And what you do with this is you can ask a question. My question, my question that I asked was, uh, who's going to win, the Eagles or the Vikings? That's the information I wanted to find out. I don't think I worded it that way when I wrote my coordinates down or my target down. But with associate remote viewing, I'm not viewing the game. I'm not viewing the Eagles. I'm not viewing the Vikings. What I'm doing is I'm viewing one of two possible targets. Now, I had a third party who happens to be my mother. Uh, I, I contacted her. First, I did the session. And uh, once the session was over, I contacted my mother and I said, please select two targets. Label one target, target A. Label the next target, target B. And let me know when you have them and then send them to me. So I did my session. I got my data. I wrote everything down. And this is why with remote viewing, it's important to write down not what you think the target is, but describe it. Because as I'm... As I'm writing down all my details about this target, in my head I'm thinking, this looks like Fred Flintstone's house. Made no sense to me. Um, if I would have just wrote down Fred Flintstone's house, this would have been wrong. I would have completely missed the target. But what I did was I described the textures, I described uh, the material, I described the shapes of it, I described some other, so many other aspects of it. And when I looked at the target itself... Uh, and I compared it to my notes, I mean, there's a lot of hits on what this target is. And the thing is, she sent me two targets, target A and target B. So I can look at my data now, and I can say, yep, the the data that I received, the data set that I, I had through my session, matches cl more closely, more accurately, to target, I think it was target B. So target A represented the Eagles winning. Target B represented the Vikings winning. So because the data I gathered matched closely to the Vikings, that's my prediction. I predict that the Vikings are winning the game. Now, from what I understand, that's a no-brainer. That's what everybody's saying anyway. But I wasn't viewing the game. I was viewing targets. Target A represents the Eagles winning. Target B represented the Vikings winning. And I happen to perceive target B. So it has nothing to do with my knowledge of the game or my preconceived notions of the game. I didn't know which target I was going to get. So anyway, it was a really cool experiment. Speaking of intuition, I hope I'm not boring you guys. Uh, you know, I, I applied for uh, for another position within my job um, about two weeks ago. I went for an interview, and I, I have a pretty good reputation where I'm at. And I, I felt that that I the interview went incredibly well. I walked out of there confident. I knew the competition was steep, but I walked out of there feeling about eighty percent sure that I had the job. I knew that there was somebody else, an, an equally strong candidate for the position. But I was, uh, I was pretty confident I was going to get it. And I spoke to a friend of mine, and I don't know if they had inside knowledge or not, but I, ju I just said, hey, I hope I find out about this position soon. And I got hit. As soon as I said it, I got hit with a wave of, you didn't get the job. It, it just hit me so clearly as if I had just gotten a phone call. And, and I don't my confidence doesn't shatter like that. There's no reason for my... I'm a very... I'm overly confident and cocky, as, as many of you probably know. So I know this was an intuitive perception that I was receiving. And I dealt with it. I dealt with it. And then I ended up talking to somebody else. And they said they had no knowledge of whether or not I had the job. But as soon as I said something to them, I got hit with the same wave. It, it's weird. I, I can't explain it. It's a feeling I get. It's it, it, I, I can understand now when I'm getting psychic data versus my imagination. It, it's a totally different feeling, a totally different sensation. And I got hit with that feeling, and I'm going, wow, but I really thought I had a shot at getting this job. Well, lo and behold, three days later, I get a letter in the mail. Uh, we regret to inform you that you know this position was given to somebody else. So it's all right. It's for the best. It works out. But you know, I'm, I'm all excited that, wow, that was a pretty cool experience, You know, getting that information ahead of time and knowing that information. And the more we practice these skills, the more we're able to, to do that and to tap into this information where, you know, we have a pretty cool ability to be able to do that. So there's my little experience. I share these stories with you because again, I am trying to make these more comfortable, more common. Uh, and, and I think we overlook our intuit our intuition quite often in this world. And the more we can pay attention to it, the more we can, uh, 
refine it and utilize it to our benefit. And I think it could be a major help to all of us. So let's see, let's go through my checklist here. Real quick, I've been doing some polls on uh, Instagram over the last two days. I did one uh, two days ago. The Instagram poll asked, you know, how do you use your intuition? Do you trust your intuition? And I had five of my followers participate in that poll. All five of them said they do, in fact, trust their intuition. So my hope is that they will be interested in refining that. Now, yesterday I did a poll that I think made people just a little bit more uncomfortable. I only had two people that responded to this one. Um, But the poll was, if you had the option to improve your intuitive abilities and develop some sort of psychic ability, would you want to do that? Would you want some psychic powers or psychic gifts? And uh, two people answered that poll, and both of those people said they would, in fact, have an interest in it. And that's what I'm loving about being able to connect with people. Number one, just seeing who's who's at least watching my Instagram stories uh, and who's starting to participate in these polls. I just started doing this. People I would never expect to have an interest in the show or my content, and it's just really humbling to me because in my head, I think everybody thinks I'm Looney Tunes, and maybe they do, but it means the world to me when I see people consistently pay attention to the 30 seconds that I put up there on Instagram, uh, you know, or they, they listen to what I have to say. It means the world to me. I hope that what I'm talking about is, is sinking in and, and is making a difference, and I am, I'm truly grateful for every one of you out there. It really means the world to me that you take the time to listen and respond and to pay attention to the content that we're putting out, not just through the secret podcast, but through six sense media as well. All right. Got a few news stories. I want to get uh, Rose in a line and get to her content as soon as possible. Um, just a few things that I wanted to talk about on the, uh, on the show this, this, uh, this evening. And I just lost my one spot and it's a shame. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right, here we go. Heart math. I got a newsletter from heart math. Heart math is like the crux of a lot of the research I've been doing. Um, they found something cool. A study and newly developed analysis technique supports group synchronization with magnetic fields. I'm just going to read a real quick intro to it. The interpersonal relationships of a group of individuals in Lithuania were found to affect the degree of synchronization of their heart rhythms as well as changes in local magnetic fields during a recent published research study. The research which supported a heart math hypothesis on these effects was conducted using newly developed and validated analysis technique by researchers at the Kiwanis University of Technology in Lithuania. The study, Identification of a Group's Psychological Synchronization with Earth's Magnetic Field, was published in September in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. More to that, check it out with heart math. But that's what I've been saying. This is the mechanism. This is where I can say, I'm not nuts, this isn't in my head. There's now research available showing the connections between psychic activity, really, and psychic is even a word that I, I wish I could get away from because it's got so many negative connotations attached. You say psychic, people start rolling their eyes at you, but there's science behind this now, the science of empathy, the science of being able, we're swimming in this electromagnetic field, the magnetic field that we're connected to, that the earth has, that the sun has, we are all connected to it, and it's data, it's like a Wi-Fi internet, and there's more and more studies coming out now showing how we're able to synchronize with this field. I could go on forever about it and the importance of making sure we maintain a healthy electromagnetic field around us because that contributes to the electromagnetic field of others, of our communities, and that's how we can spread world peace. I'll get into that a little bit later, probably another show once again. All right, uh, let's see what else here. As I'm pulling up my articles, as always. All right. Uh, Alibaba, Alibaba's AI outguns humans in a reading test. This comes to us from Bloomberg.com. Uh, it's natural language processing AI scored higher than humans. Alibaba says it's the first time a machine outperformed people. Alibaba has developed an artificial intelligence model that scored better than humans in a Stanford University reading and comprehension test. Alibaba Holding LTD put its deep neural network model through its paces last week, asking the AI to provide exact answers to more than 100,000 questions, comprising a quiz that's considered one of the world's most authoritative machine reading gauges. The model developed by Alibaba's Institute of Data Science and Technology scored 82.44, edging past the 82.304 that rival humans achieved. Now, this doesn't come as a surprise, We know AI, if it continues on this path, will be much smarter than humans. I I put out in a show previously, they're looking at AI at having an IQ of, I think, 10,000 within the next 30 years. 
one of the highest human IQs, anywhere between like 160 and 200, which is rare. Um, I think, don't quote me on that, but that's roughly where the human IQ is, uh, the limits of it. So these machines are going to be smarter than us. Again, that's another show. That's several other shows that I've done in the archives. But I continue to track the AI stuff because I, I really think that it tells us something about who we are and the development of our own consciousness and possibly our own species. Go back, listen to my show last week, uh, talking about demons and several other shows that I have linked to that one. Uh, very interesting stuff. I've got a story I want to get to in about two, uh, two or three minutes uh, talking about this on, on an even deeper level. A little more AI stuff. Facial recognition database, Google's new art selfie app sparks privacy concerns. This is from uh, rt.com. I'll have this up in the show notes as well so you can read the entire article. But it's talking about, you saw a lot of people, they put their selfie up there and then uh, Google will pull some artwork from wherever uh, online and tell you, hey, here's who you look like. Well, I saw that and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. This bothers me. I, I suspect this is uh, a way of grabbing facial recognition data. I, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I mean, our stuff's already out there anyway, but I think this is some kind of algorithm, some machine learning type of thing. I, I really don't think it's what they're telling us that it is. So I would proceed with caution. I'll have the links to this in the show notes uh, and in the secret newsletter that comes out on Sunday. You can check it out and read a little bit more about it. All right, the next one from Daily Mail. The AI that can tell you when you'll die. Stanford reveals a startlingly accurate system to predict the end of life for hospital patients. Stanford researchers trained a deep neural network on 2 million hospital records. With this, the algorithm learned to accurately predict patients' mortality. Research say this can be used to help pre-screen patients for end-of-life care. A lot of concerns with this. Um, You know, you're going to trust an AI to maybe predict and determine end-of-life care is that going to end up being a bad thing? What if the AI becomes corrupted? What if the AI becomes hacked? Obviously, um, I just we got to keep humans in control. We got to keep them in the loop. I, I keep coming back to that. Watching this evolve is uh, fascinatingly scary. All right, shifting gears away from AI for a minute. The Guardian reports a complex engineering and metalwork discovered beneath ancient Greek pyramid. Latest find on C. Eccles Kuros includes evidence of metalworking and suggests the beginnings of an urban center, say archaeologists. More than 4,000 years ago, builders carved out an entire surface of a naturally pyramid-shaped uh, promontory, I can't even say this word, promontory on the Greek island of Kuros. They shaped it into terraces covered with 1,000 tons of specially imported gleaming white stone to give it the appearance of a giant step pyramid rising from the Aegean the most important man-made structure in all of Cleides Archipelago. But beneath the surface of the terraces lay undiscovered feats of engineering and craftsmanship to rival the structure's impressive exterior. Archaeologists from three different countries involved in an ongoing excavation have found found, found found evidence evidence of a complex of drainage tunnels 4,000 years before the famous indoor plumbing of the Manoa Palace of Knossos on Crete and traces of sophisticated metalworking. I will have the rest of this article in the show notes for you to check out and read the rest of it. It's a fascinating read. Again, I, I, I've i said it before. I've covered several stories on this. Um, our history is not what we've been told. Our recent ancestors going back 6,000 years, I don't think we're as primitive as we've been told. And there's more and more evidence that's coming out through the independent media uh, that we're seeing now. It's getting harder and harder for people to debunk and for science to deny that we have a much richer, much more sophisticated ancient history than uh, we've been led to believe that goes back a lot further, which ties into this AI as well, which I think there's already an AI that has something significant to do with our current incarnation and existence. I'm not going to get into that on this show, though. I did that the last couple weeks. All right, now this one, this is the article I'm most excited about because, again, I'm finding another parallel to spiritual principles here. This is from Business Insider. Microsoft execs say in 20 years... We'll have a digital. We'll have digital assistants that will be our alter egos, and we need to set ground rules while we still can. So this talks about an interview with uh, Microsoft President Brad Smith and uh, Executive Vice President of AI and Research Harry Shum. Uh, they want to uh, democratize artificial intelligence. So I'll read the highlights here. 
Microsoft President Brad Smith and EVP of AI and Research Harry Shum have co-authored a new book about AI called The Future Computed. Smith and Shum told Business Insider that Microsoft is in the position to lead AI research and development and that they are working to democratize AI by sharing what they learn with com- competitors and the public. They said the ultimate manifestation of AI in 20 years will be in a digital assistant that will serve as an alter ego. The jobs AI and automation create will further compel the need for, for post-high school education. I'll have this whole article, this whole interview in there. But I want to talk for a minute about an Egyptian spiritual principle. Before I do that, let's talk about this alter ego they're talking about. So we know AI, we know technology is getting smaller. We know that right now technology is in the wearable stage. you got the Google Watch, got the Google Glasses. They're working on implantable tech. Uh, Elon Musk has Neuralink. He's working on the nanotech to interface your brain with the cloud. That stuff is coming. The augmented reality, the virtual reality, that stuff is all happening. This virtual assistant, this AI assistant, you may be able to access without any hardware in your hand or on your face. It may be something that's implanted in you, okay? Especially if they get some kind of nanotechnology that they can inject in you that's going to allow you to communicate and interface with this network, with this cloud where this AI might live, Okay, I'm going out on a limb here a little bit, but it's based on some pretty good research I've been doing following all this AI development here. So you're going to have this little AI that lives out in the cloud that's going to be your assistant. You can go to it for information. You can go to it to keep your schedule. Well, if you go back to ancient Egypt, there was a a spiritual principle called Ka, K-A. Now, I just gave two quick references to it from Dictionary.com and Britannica. There's much more deeper explanations of it, but I didn't have a lot of time. Ka is a spiritual entity, an aspect of an in, of the individual believed to live within the body during life and to survive it after death. Okay, that's from dictionary.com. Now, if we go to Britannica, it's a little bit more in depth. Ka in ancient Egypt religion, with the ba and the ak, a principal aspect of the soul of a human being or of a god. The exact significance of the ka remains a matter of controversy, chiefly for lack of an Egyptian definition. The usual translation, double, is incorrect. Written by a hieroglyph of uplifted arms, it seems originally to have been designed, designated the protecting divine spirit of a person. The ka survived the death of the body and could reside in a picture or statue of a person. Well, do you think this copy of yourself that acts as your assistant could reside in some form of robot or tech or picture, flat screen, whatever? I think we're seeing a reinvention of old technology that was then later interpreted as spiritual principles. I I really could do a whole show on this. I will probably be coming back to this, but I'm at my mark right now, and I need to bring my friend Rose on. These will be in the show notes. Make sure you check it out. Okay, there's so much I want to talk about on this um, as well. Real quick commercial, one more. The Farsight Institute, they have dropped their newest uh, project, The War in Heaven. I, I can't wait to watch this. I-, I hope to get into it this weekend. I will talk more about that once I have a chance to review it. Check it out, farsight.org. They just released their newest uh, mysteries project. It's going to be, it-, it looks fascinating, so check it out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring Rose on the air, and we're going to talk about her unique gift of communicating with those who have passed on. Okay, friends, I'm about to bring my friend Rose on the air. Rose is a Reiki master, uh, teacher from Anthony Wojnar, DDRMT. She's a psychic medium, angel reader, yoga instructor. Uh, Rose has been practicing massage for 10 years, and what she loves most about massage is the feeling of such gratitude from her clients. They leave feeling well, energized, and happy, and it's a blessing for her to be a part of their healing journey. Uh, a specialty service that she offers is called the Medium Massage. She's a psychic medium. And in this service, she connects with the departed loved one while the client gets the sweetest massage. It's a very spiritual and healing experience. Uh, She also offers Reiki, which she's been practicing for 12 years and has recently become a Reiki master teacher. Reiki has become an important, integral part of her massages. For her, the two therapies go hand in hand, and the healing benefits from both are outstanding. And she's also a yoga instructor and has been teaching yoga for 10 years. Yoga is an inspiration to her while on her journey in becoming a better person. Uh, and she wants to share her journey with others and inspire them to want to give yoga a try. 
which is uh, exciting because she can share her journey with all of you out there today as I bring Rose on the air this evening. Rose, how are you, my friend? Hello, Dennis. I'm uh, Rose I'm, here. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, to have Rose here on the air. Uh, we connected, was it about two years ago, I guess, now that it's been since we first met? I- yeah, I think so. About two years, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's kind of neat just, you know, you don't always realize people with interests in this type of stuff when you're going to bump into somebody, of, you know, along that path. So I was excited when I met uh, met you guys over at Zenergy and was able to come in and uh, share some stories and, and some Reiki there. Uh, but I've wanted to talk to you about this particular, the medium massage that you do for quite some time. Uh, so I'm excited to have this okay. discussion. And I, I just want to start off by asking, how did you... First, why don't you tell our, our, our listeners what a medium actually is, and then we can get into kind of the backstory of you know how you found out you had this. Well, a medium is <laughs> a regular person mm-hmm. like me who just can hear messages from spirits on the other side. I mean, it takes some practice, and and that's what I've done over the years is practice um, listening and as I listen I receive messages so it kind of started out kind of slowly and while I was giving clients massages that's when I started hearing messages and I'm like hmm what is this Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I really didn't know what it was in the beginning and then I realized um, I was getting messages from spirits on the other side so it was kind of a surprise for me <laughs> but um I bet. it was just um i think with doing yoga and uh, a lot of meditation um quieting my mind being able to hear those messages that's that's the thing that's the key <laughs> quieting the mind and being able to hear um messages and that's what I do. <laughs> when you say you, you hear messages, I mean, are you getting, to you, does it sound like aud- audio, like audible sounds as if you're wearing headphones? I mean, what what is it, how do you get this? Um, it's like my own, the way that I experience it. I'm, I'm not sure how other mediums experience it, but for me, it's a message in my own voice, but it's not me talking (laughs) if that sounds uh if that makes sense I mean um Mm -hmm. like I know it's it's not me talking to me but it's hearing my own voice with you know a message from a spirit right but you know that that it's not coming from (laughs) you right um and I'll know you know whether it's a a male or female Mm -hmm. or I'll I'll know if it's maybe a grandfather or grandmother, even like if it's a small child. How do you know that? uh, Sometimes it comes in as just a feeling. And Mm -hmm. and I will see pictures. Um, I don't always see pictures, but they send me pictures when there's something significant, like they wanted to show me uh, a dress that they wore maybe uh, for a wedding or just like a memory that so that they they were trying to tell me this is what I wore at this time you know so I could tell the client oh um they wore this this kind of dress and I'm seeing them in this dress and then they're like oh that was when we went to you know whatever so mm-hmm. it's kind of like something you know concrete to the validate that they can, yeah mm-hmm. to validate exactly right you know that's like, interesting well, I'm sorry go ahead <laughs> Oh, I was just going to use an example of um, a time that I did a medium massage for a woman. Um, I, I won't. I don't even remember her name, but I would never use right. any names. But her her daughter, she was young. She was a teenager, maybe 18 or 19, and she passed away. And she showed me her um, prom dress. So I saw her in her prom dress and... I was telling her the color, and so that was a very significant thing, and actually very moving, and <laughs> it almost brought me to tears. It was, right. you know, very just um, kind of 
kind of overwhelming for the mom, but also very comforting for her, you know, saying, oh, yes, I, you know, I remember the stress. And so things like that, um, they kind of, they give me that um, picture or message that way. So um, the client that I'm doing the service for will know that that was a significant thing and, and that was impo- an important thing. Right. And so, and it removes, I guess it removes that doubt, you know, cause I can see people being unsure on, un, uneasy about saying, Hey, I'm going to communicate with somebody who's passed on just because of paradigms and belief systems that we have right now. This isn't a, a normally accepted thing for a lot of people that people pass on and we can communicate with them. Uh, so right. I guess getting that helps bridge that, that gap, that paradigm people yeah they always try to bring a message or something that that was maybe significant between them Mm -hmm. that or that happened or uh maybe a trip they went on together right or um maybe a party went to or they'll talk about how they used to bake cookies or you know something like that um just something they shared together that was like oh okay so you know (laughs) Now, do these, does this only happen when you, you know, get yourself into a certain state of mind during the massage, or do you have voices screaming at you all day long, like you'd see on, on uh, Hollywood? No, like I don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know for some mediums, it's like that. Right. Um, but I, I don't know. I just don't allow that. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going over the wall now, and right. I'm going to turn the on switch. I'm going to flip the switch on. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like... I don't know, turning on the, <laughs> the right. listening vibes kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I'm open for that. It's kind of like I'm, I'm turning on the light. Right. And now, now the moths can, um, gonna kind of gravitate towards me. Right. Kind of thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and then when I shut it off, that's it. You know, like I'm done. Like, <laughs> do you have a particular method that you go through? I mean, in case anybody out there is listening and, and maybe is experiencing this and doesn't know how to shut it off. I mean, I have talked to some people, you know, through the internet who, it, you know, these abilities can be very draining for them and very exhausting because they can't turn it off. Right. Um, well, I would say um, they're not grounded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe they're not getting grounded. And by that, I mean, um, you can physically get grounded, like take off the shoes, go outside and walk right. on the grass or and whatever and get grounded that way. They sell things. I, I'm looking to get one of these. I just watched the documentary Grounded on a side note. Have you seen this yet? Uh, no. It's it's fascinating. I'll send it to you offline. Um, but long story short, they found a, a, a wealth of health benefits and dealing with inflammation in the body and all this stuff. This would be great for you and Shannon as energy. I think I'll, I'll send it to you to, to check it out. Um, oh, okay. So, Was it the experiment where he um, he attached something to his feet all the way to outside and yeah. Yeah, he plugged it in and he grounded it to the earth. And yeah, it's really cool. Yes, I I did see that. I did Mm -hmm. see that. That, I know that was pretty, I was like, wow. Yeah, I'm going to give that a try. Hopefully, within the next week or two, I'd like to track that and see how, you know, if it makes a difference with me. Yeah. So, well, I feel like if if you're an energy worker, Mm -hmm. not just a medium, but even a Reiki worker, any kind of dealing with energy or other people's energy, um, you should definitely do yoga definitely maybe uh, meditate so I meditate every day Mm -hmm. you know I didn't I wasn't always like that but I realized I have to meditate every day (laughs) yeah yeah and I think Um, once you start doing the energy work I know for me you know simple things like I I started meditating more I started practicing yoga because it just felt it gave me a, a sense of control over the energies that I work with and I started going barefoot more, especially when I'm doing energy work. It was just a feeling, an intuitive feeling I had. It said, I, I just can't wear shoes, especially when I'm doing Reiki. Um, you know, the shoes have to come off. And I, I mean, that's just my method. but Right. And you want to you wanna keep your energy, at, well, your grounding. So your, uh, the lower energies you mm-hmm. want, because especially like don't wear crystals and things like that if you're, if you're a medium. Mm-hmm. because that raises your vibration up higher and uh, spirits, their vibration is lower. It's not as high as like angels and right. and things. And you don't want your energy that high. 
So, you know, I don't wear crystals and things like that because I want to keep my vibration right. lower at the level of the spirit. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, you, know, you said something else that I that I thought was interesting. I just wanted to give a, a kind of a side note of support, where you said that when you hear these voices, it's it's your own voice, but you know it's not you. And I remember right. I was dealing with uh, some darker stuff, and I think you even called it out when we did a session. You said, "Remember, I don't know if you remember or not, but you said as you were, as you were giving me Reiki, you encountered something that said, hey, 'Hey, I'm Dennis the Menace,' and uh, we weren't too sure what it was. Do you remember that? Oh yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, I got a chuckle out of it, me. but I, I remember <laughs> before that session saying, you know, there's, it was that negative self-talk in my head that I would hear a lot, especially after, um, you know, my father died and all that stuff. Right. I really started hearing that negative self-talk. And one day I realized this is my voice, but this isn't me, you know? So when you said that, it, it just resonated with me that, you know, maybe that's what I was dealing with is hearing something else. I mean, I, that's the conclusion I came to. Um, but I just kind of dismissed it and, and haven't heard from it really since that Reiki session with you. So Well, it could have, uh, I'm trying to remember um, what was happening, but I felt like it was, it was a part of you, mm -hmm. um, but like a darker part, like right. um, just some, maybe something that you, uh, you know, maybe self doubt and anxieties and um, just things that, you know, we're not positive and kind of gathered up and decided to be like Dennis the Menace. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like it, it was still a part of you, uh -huh. but it was stuff that maybe you needed to purge and get rid of. And right. Well, it, it helped whatever, whatever you did during that session, you know, it, it definitely. Yeah. I, it, we, I think we got rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, <laughs> or I did. He hasn't been back. So. <laughs> I'll let you know Good. if he returns. No more Dennis the Menace. I know. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. So I'm, I'm curious, Rose, is how did how did this all start? How did you realize that you can talk to people who have passed on? Where did how did this come about? Well, um, we'll go well all the way back to uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll start there. Um, that was when. Uh, my sister Tara passed away. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was a pretty tragic thing. And then my brother-in-law, her husband died six months later. And then my mother died six months after that. Wow. So it was like a whole year of this, uh, <laughs> crazy, uh, what's going on? All these people, you know, I lost, you know, three family members and mm -hmm. it was, something changed in me, I guess something kind of opened up and I don't really, I don't know how to explain it. Well, I guess I know how to explain it. It was just like, like I said, something opened up and I just started like reading books. And, uh, one of our clients, when my mother passed away, gave me a book called, um, angel speak. Mm -hmm. So I was, they're really into it, and it's actually just a book on how to speak to angels. <laughs> right. And it was a really great book. I loved it, and it kind of showed me how to just uh, ask questions and, you know, the, the quieting the mind kind of thing that I was talking about. Right. And listening for those messages. I mean, asking your angels uh, whatever you want, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And listening, you know, to what they have to say. So I started out, my energy work stuff started that with that. I mean, actually, I did do Reiki, um, just Reiki 1. And then that was actually the beginning of my energy work. But then when my sister passed away, it kind of, you know, kind of went another direction and like... I started speaking with angels, so it was kind of like an upward course of, <laughs> right. okay, this, I started with Reiki 1, and then, okay, read the book and learn how to, <laughs> you know, it seems kind of weird to learn out of a book, but. As an author, I don't think that's weird at all. I'm just going <laughs> to give that plug right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from learning Reiki, that was my 
initial start mm-hmm. actually of of um energy work and if you want to go even further back into my past <laughs> um the very first experience with um reiki or energy work was with my my best friend tori her mother she was like my second mom pammy her and her best friend were into i guess it was reiki back then i'd I don't know what they called it, Mm -hmm. but um, they were always talking about sending the light. Well, I'm going to send the light to this person and I'm going to send the light to that person. And I'm like, what in the world are these ladies talking about? Right, right. So then my friend explained to me, well, that's, you know, this." to me, it was kind of like, okay, it's like a prayer then, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're sending this light to that person person so that was in my teens right yeah, sorry i'm exploded. skipping around a little bit with how it's going but no, i was no, no. trying to i was trying to like kind of tracking back to where actually where i was like really got interested in it and stuff that like you know you can't see but it works and <laughs> kind of right. energy work and the light and and angels and i've always had a you know an interest in angels and you know collecting them and being fascinated by angels and so then we'll go back to uh the angel speak book so i eventually i practiced for about two years just writing um or asking questions my own questions you know um dear you know i was writing it in a book dear angels you know what's going to happen with this and this and this and quieting my mind, listening, and then they would tell me and I would just write whatever that was. And they, they always started with um, dear one or dear child or something right. to that effect. They're very, I don't know, <laughs> it was kind of very sweet. I don't know if that's how they address everyone, but that's how they address me. <laughs> and was this the same, like you're hearing it the same way? Um, yes. Kind of like me talking to me. <laughs> right. But yeah, knowing, you hear it in your I'm, voice, but no, it's not but, you. But, you know, you know how you talk to yourself and you know, like, right. that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound like something I would say. Right. Right. Or if it's something that sounds, that sounds pretty smart. That can't be me. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. Like, where, how, how right. did I come up with that? No, that couldn't have been for me. I didn't come up with that. But right. something that, you know, like, well... I don't know about that, so that had to have been. Right. No, I understand. I mean, I get occasional, you know, especially before I really started trying to understand exactly what was happening. I guess we're going maybe 10 years back now. I started getting what I called downloads. And I get just a message in my head, and it would just play over and over and over again. And a lot of times I would ignore it until, you know, it just kept going and going. I said, okay, let me look into this, and I'd find out, wow, there's something to this. This is real. This is... You know, I'm not making this up. I don't know where this is coming from. You know, eventually got to the point where it just, I, I don't even know if I hear it anymore. I just know I got a message and I go with it and, and you know, do whatever I need to do. But um, it sounds like a similar mechanism, I guess. Right. Um, so your angels were probably um, downloading, as you said, um, things that they thought was important or that you needed to hear or helping you with what, you know, whatever it was you're, um, you were doing with your writing. Mm-hmm. Was it for your writing? Oh, your book? Um, oh. it's, you know, it's random stuff. I mean, I've been looking into a lot of these, uh, spiritual and, and paranormal aspects, trying to understand this existence for a long time. So sometimes it would be just, Hey, research this or look into that or, you know, um, a strange one. I got to talk about this in the, in the book I'm working on now. I'm outside gardening one day, and I, I get a message, you need to change your diet. And I'm like, change my diet? Why am I going to change my diet? I'm fine. Um, but I kept hearing it and hearing it. And long story short, that led me on uh, a journey to find a specific diet called the alkaline diet. And I looked at it, and I oh. said, okay, that's interesting. It makes a lot of sense. Um, but I, my son was just born, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it at that point in time. Fast forward six months, my father ends up with cancer. And uh, after all our research and, you know, holistic methods to treat him, lo and behold, the top diet to put cancer patients on was the alkaline diet. 
Um, oh wow! So okay. that you know that really hit home that's for me. Amazing. That's yeah. that is what kind of really pushed me over the edge to really pursue a whole bunch of other stuff. Happened. It's a different story, but um, you know that was one of the major things that kind of drove me. Like, hey, there's, there's something to this here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's been a wild ride to say the least. <laughs> and what was I gonna say? Um. I think recently too, I've been called to like start doing my angel writings again. Because mm-hmm. after I learned how to do it, um, I, I started doing it at work. Um, I haven't done them in a few years, actually. I, I guess I need to put that out there again, maybe. Right. Um, so I would just have a client would come in, and I would just um, they'd come in the room, lay down, and I would hold their hand. And um, just start, um, they would ask me a question, and then I would, that's when I would start writing. Mm -hmm. And whatever messages, um, and I've been writing pretty fast, too. Right. Is this automatic writing? It's only like a 20-minute service. It's very quick, quick service because Uh I wrote real fast. And like a page and a half, maybe sometimes, sometimes two pages. Right. And... And I would give them their message, and that was <laughs> that's pretty much it. But right. it was still pretty cool. It was like kind of like getting a, a psychic reading, um, you mm-hmm. know. But I'm I'm doing all the writing, and instead of talking, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's for me. These were a different kind of reading because it's I'll say a psychic reading because it was actually from angels, and it's and they always give such a loving meaningful kind of message it's not like um you know I, I would tell them well don't ask me to ask them uh the lottery numbers because that's <laughs> right not gonna give me lottery numbers right you know and things like that it's not their it, realm it was it was always something that was you know they needed on the on the path or the journey that they're on that was mm-hmm. you know meaningful and would be helpful to them so because think, they always want they always want to help, you know, and you I just know. had a conversation with uh, one of my listeners last week, you know, asking me, you know, do I think that everybody has a guide or an angel? Would you say that's the case that everybody has an angel that works with them and looks out for them? Definitely, yes. Maybe that, more probably more than one. <laughs> more than one? I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> Now, are they and able if, to if, connect with them in the way that you do? Is that something you think everybody could learn? Oh, yeah. I definitely think anybody could learn that. I mean, you could learn how to be a medium, too. I mm-hmm. mean, if you're already doing um, energy work and um, you have that drive in you, I mean, everybody has the potential to do it. It's just, it's about practice. Right. You know, they say, oh, wow, this is such a wonderful gift that you have. And I wish I could do this. And I'm like, you can do this. Right. You know, it's right. just like, do you want to do it? And, mm-hmm. you know, are you open to it? Are you afraid? You know, I guess I was never afraid of it. Like, right. I didn't feel like it was going to be weird. Or they're like, well, you're you're talking to dead people. I'm like, yeah, but it's it's in my own voice, so why should I be afraid? Right. <laughs> and I'm right. not I'm not afraid of my own voice. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll know if it's a man talking, but I'm not hearing his low tones. You know, like, right. Hey Rose, it's Bob. You know, <laughs> that that would be a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I heard it that way, I'd be like, I'm done with this mess. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. You and me both. You know, I was. <laughs> A couple shows back, I was I was talking about uh, just how like I receive what some would call psychic data or information. And I said it's it's not really that fantastic, at least for me. It's something that is so subtle that if I'm not paying attention, I could miss it. And I think because of Hollywood, a lot of times, and maybe some people have a different method, but because of Hollywood, we see movies like The Sixth Sense, or we see you know, these movies where people go into these really deep trances and their eyes roll into the back of their heads. And that's not the case for me. It may be just this tiny thought that pops in my head. And like you said, you go, that's not me. 
But it's so easy to say, oh, that's my imagination, or I must have seen something on TV, and forget about it and go about your day. But when you recognize it, and you say, well, let me probe that thought a little bit more, and then more information starts to come out because you're focused on that energy, then you start to realize, wow, this is a connection here, but it's not this glamorous, fantastic Hollywood production that I thought a psychic connection would be. Right, and that's why we doubt it. Right. A lot of times because mm-hmm. we're like, that's just my, um, that's just me, you know, talking to me or, you know, oh, look what I thought of. And I realized, no, you didn't think of that. Somebody put that there. Right. And they wanted you to hear it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we're not conditioned to accept, you know, that outside influence anymore. Uh, I'm hoping yeah, that can or, change. Yeah, or we're but. not listening, we're not paying attention, we're too, everybody's too distracted, you know, right. we're all distracted, we got, you know, we have children, we have jobs, we mm-hmm. have, you know, responsibilities, and we're doing this, and, you know, we're we're being pulled in a, in a million, million di- different directions, and, and that's how we get uncentered, and mm-hmm. and then you basically can't hear, I mean, that's happened to me, I'm like... I'll know when, like, oh, it's not a good time for me to do this today because I'm just not in the right frame of mind. Right, there's too much going on. Yeah, so that's 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 the time when you got to regroup and get back into your center, reground yourself, do some meditation. (laughs) I do a lot of, like, concentration meditations, you know, focus ones to help me focus better. Uh Um, Those are really helpful because there are times where I'm like, uh because I, I, I mean, I have, have some mentors. I've talked to other mediums to get, um, you know, some some help and like, what should I do? You know, I'm not really hearing them very loud. Like you said, you know, sometimes I get mm-hmm. my messages and they're very faint. And then she's they tell me, well, maybe they they were just like kind of shy and they're not speaking up and like how do I tell them to talk louder you know right tell them, right speak up so I can hear you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's gonna but, be a tough one yes I mean so that happens sometimes so I know what you're talking about the the little whisper and mm-hmm. yeah well, let me ask you this because we're, we're coming up uh towards the end of the show but let me ask okay. you have you ever encountered yep. anything scary while you've been working in this capacity with energy and as a medium? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, a, a few times. Um, I, uh, seen like, um, little, <laughs> I guess you call them like gremlins uh-huh. kind of thing. Like, uh, like kind of like running around in the room or, you know, when I was doing probably, I think I was doing some Reiki. Right. And then uh, I think these, things were maybe attached to this person right and then you know i'm just kind of keep sending light to this person and they just kind of kind of dispersed and you know went away eventually but so you stood (laughs) your ground basically it wasn't really scary but it was just like what is this you know i was more surprised if any if, if anything right but um another time i was working with um, this lady and, um, I believe she was a a witch and Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not saying anything bad event about, um, women that are women or men that practice, um, you know, um, whatever they practice, but I knew, I I knew there's a negative, you know, attachment to that, but I mean, there's actually, I mean, as you know, there's positive and negative. Yeah. There's a lot of positive things to it, but, um, I knew, I felt like, she was dabbling in something that was kind of dark. Right. So, um, when I put my hands on her, I, uh, as soon as I did, um, this wolf came at me, like Uh teeth, teeth, you know, gnashing or at me. And like that, that was probably the scariest thing that I've ever had to deal with was like, this wolf coming at me. Now, when it came at <laughs> you, was that with your eyes closed? You saw it in your mind's eye? Did you yeah, see it was like or? right in front of, it was like right in front of my face. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, I do see pictures. I, I'm more of a hearing. I usually hear all my messages and right. I don't, I'm not very much with the visual, like unless <laughs> it's something right. like that, <laughs> yeah. that I actually saw, That you saw. you know, the teeth and 
like he wanted to bite me because you know he wanted to stay where he was and mm-hmm. he didn't want I to just, go. Yeah, so um, so I, I did what I could to. Now to you do fix hear that. people, uh, you know, and I've heard this before, you know, timeless, time and again. Um, when you work in this stuff, you're opening yourself up to negativity, to evil, to the devil. I mean, I, I don't, I know that's not the case, but. How do you respond to a statement like that? How can you tell somebody, hey, this is safe, but, you know, what, what's what's your response to a statement like that? Well, essentially, you are opening yourself up to different energies and mm-hmm. anything, good, bad, or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, the main thing is staying grounded. For me, it's always been my faith. Right. So. I can't say for anybody else how they deal with it, but for me, staying grounded in my faith because I'm a Christian and and I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, it's actually helped me be a better Christian. Right. Um, I'm, it, uh, being in working with the energy work has, I've become probably a better Christian and I've actually brought it into my work. And that's just, I've always been that way. I have crop you know, crosses in my, uh, treatment room. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I always, um, draw in the love and light of Christ. That's just, that's what I've always done. And I feel like that light protects me. Mm -hmm. Now for other people, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how, what they're using to protect themselves, but I know that, you know, if you, I draw in like a column of light, Right. From up from the universe down over me, so that's kind of a protective shield, um, you know, a, a light shield from mm-hmm. <laughs> from Christ, you know. Right. So um, I, I'm not trying to get into a, a religion or anything. No, you're not. You. I mean, that's that's um, your method. That's and, and that but, works for you because it resonates with you. Right, and I I've always felt. Um, protected by Christ, Mm -hmm. um, in all of my sessions. And, and I've always felt like that's, that's my connection and, and protection. Right. Uh, That rhymes connection and protection. (laughs) (laughs) Medium poet. Here we go. (laughs) I'm a poet and didn't know it. Actually, I do know it. (laughs) (laughs) You show it. (laughs) Yeah. So love and light of Christ. That's my protection. Always has been, always will. And that's, that's my gig. That's what I do. (laughs) Okay. Now (laughs) let's ask you one more question here. What advice do you have for somebody who's interested in getting into this or maybe is just starting to experience it? What, what advice would you give somebody who who wants to know more or do more? Well, I would, I would definitely read up on it. I mean, I read, read a lot of books Mm -hmm. myself, um, uh, I've read one by Doreen Virtue. Um, it's an angel book. I'm trying to remember the name of it, and I'm forgetting at the moment. But it has to do with uh, she has uh, how to be a medium in it, and she talks about angels. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the book. Wait, okay. I think I actually have it here. Okay, it's called The Angel Therapy Handbook. Mm-hmm. by Doreen Virtue. Okay. That's a really good one if you're especially if you're um really interested in being a medium. It's very well um wrote and she d- gives a lot of examples of you should ask for this and you should do this and diagrams and all kinds of stuff in there. So that one's pretty good. But I would just read up on it a lot and talk to um I've talked to lots of other mediums, you know, that have more um, years experience than myself. Right. I asked for their um, advice. Um, recently, I asked, um, well, maybe about five, six months ago, um, I have a friend that's a medium in Toledo, Ohio, where I'm, I'm from, mm-hmm. <laughs> something, um, and she was very helpful. And I learned, I, I learned something from, everyone I talk to that's in the field, you know, so like, Oh, okay. She gave me some good advice. I can uh, do it this way and try it a different way. You know, you know, when you're going through this, you're processing all this, all this information is coming at you and 
it's good to reach out to people that do the same thing, you know. Right. Just ask another medium, read as many books as you can, and definitely um, do some yoga. Meditation is probably big. The biggest thing is quieting right. your mind and listening to nothing <laughs> so I, that I agree, when you yeah. do when you do get those those messages from spirits or you know like you downloading information for books or for mm-hmm. your blog or whatever then you um you know you have a clear um pathway for them to come through you know you don't have all this jumbled energy in there and it's kind of stuck and nothing's getting getting through you know Absolutely. That's great advice, Rose. Uh, you know, read the books and, and staying grounded, like you said, with the yoga and, and the meditation. Um, and it's great to be able to connect with somebody who's who's done this. Um, yeah, definitely. Meditation is like, it's just changed me a lot. Mm-hmm. And yoga, too. I've changed so much from uh, teaching yoga and um, practicing yoga. And meditating is probably the biggest thing because it also, I mean, not just when I quiet my mind, I feel like any tensions in my head, it just come lifts up. Mm-hmm. I actually feel it. It's kind of crazy, but I feel it lift up out of my head. Right. So whatever I had in there, you know, it's clearing out. So the good stuff can... Uh, stay in there <laughs> right right and, and the other stuff drains out no it's i know exactly like a, what you're a, saying a daily a daily cleansing of right. the body and soul so and i think that once you get into the energy work you know because i was very i've always had i guess these paranormal supernatural experiences growing up as a kid psychic you know strong intuitions but nothing discipline nothing controlled just stuff would happen or i would know things or i'd have a dream and when right. I went and got my Reiki certification, I was like the biggest skeptic in the world. I was like, oh, I've never heard of Reiki. I don't know what this is This is going to be. So, I, you know, I went through the class. And I remember as I started giving my first Reiki session, I'm, I'm put my hands over the woman's head. And all of a sudden, a pair of lungs, I see purple lungs floating in front of me. And I'm like, well, that's weird. She says, what's the matter? I said, purple lungs floating in front of me. She says, oh, I just had an asthma attack yesterday. You know, I'm doing a little bit better now. And. I said, wow, there's something to this, you know, <laughs> so it was, it was weird there how I go. opened up, but then everything changed, because then I started doing the Reiki and understanding energy work, and then, you know, the yoga started and everything, and everything you just said, you know, and when you can read books, you know, and, and or can read, talk to people that, that do this, you realize, hey, yes. this isn't crazy, I'm not the only one that has these experiences, and there's people that can guide you through it, so that's great advice, Rose. Yes, and it's also about trusting trusting the messages that you're getting as well right you know not just like if you're doubting every message you get no no it can't be that Mm -hmm. you have to learn to trust the messages you know right and And that's i see that's been great with reiki you know and and that's been i guess what i've been doing is when i get like I've, i've started to see auras more strongly and starting to actually understand a little bit what they might mean so i've started asking people Hey, do you have something going on in this area of your body? You know, I've been comfortable enough to say that. And a lot of times they validate it. And when they don't, I can say, okay, well, whatever I just experienced wasn't something I need to pay attention to. Uh, and, and it's helpful to not be afraid to be wrong. Right, or, especially or if you're, like, you're drawn to that area. Right. You know, like a gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh because we know what we're what we're talking about. I don't know. That's right. Do you, you want to share that real quick? I mean, we're just about out of time. If it's okay. up to you, if you want to share it. <laughs> yeah. So Dennis did a uh, we did a Reiki share, and um, I was having some belly issues at the time, and um, <laughs> my gallbladder was obviously needed to go. So the next day, um, I started getting a fever. And went to the hospital, and they said, oh, your gallbladder needs to come out. So, <laughs> thank you Blame for helping me. me get rid of my... <laughs> <laughs> but I kept getting drawn to that one spot, remember? I kept seeing, some, I don't remember what yes. I was seeing now, like a, a different color. I said, what's going on here? And so Yeah, was it was very um, inflamed. and Yeah. They said it, well, at the hospital, they said it was very um, just inflamed, and it was 
twisted and it was like it needed to come out. So that was great, you know, that you honed in on that and helped you helped lift it from the surface like it needed to come out. So right. I felt like it was a it was actually a blessing and you know who knows what it had. I don't know. But well, I'm I glad I'm glad it out. worked out, Rose. I, I really am. You surprised <laughs> yeah, me when no. you when you hit me up and you're like, yo, I just had my gallbladder out. And I said, What? Is that what I was seeing? And that freaked me out. But that and was one of those things. Fault. It is my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I broke your gallbladder. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> right. It needed to go. So But that was that what was one of those do? things where I wasn't sure. You know, because Reiki it's still newer to me. I said, I'm seeing something, but I don't know what it is and, and my in, my instincts tell me don't or not my instincts but that voice in my head is telling me don't mention that you're crazy you're not seeing anything but I, because I'm trying to understand this I I bring it up and there you go there was something to it and it was something yeah. serious and that all leads back to trusting uh-huh. your um your intuition or right. messages and saying yo this is what I'm feeling and you go with it and that's usually nine times out of ten you're you're right. Right. You know, you're, you're instead of like, right. no, 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 <laughs> tossing around in our head. And, mm-hmm. and and yet I'm still amazed every time when, when I do get something right. I'm still amazed at it. It's still fascinating to me to have that connection. It is for me, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, like when I'm doing my medium work, I'm just like, well, wow. You know, right. I learned so much from people and their lives and things. It's, it's actually an honor mm-hmm. because I'm finding out about their lives and if they were in the service and, right. you know, where they grew up or, you know, what, you know, talking about their their life and things and happy and sad things. But right. it's, it's, it's always amazing every time I do it for me. It's like, wow. Right. Yeah. Same here. It's been you know, an enriching experience. Them. But we're uh, we're yeah. just about out of time, Rose. We actually went over, okay. but it was uh, such a wonderful discussion. Do you want to give uh, you know your website, your contact information, you know, so people in the Pocono area can get in touch with you? Sure. Um, you can. Uh, I'll give you the phone number first for uh, the Energy Day Spa. Mm-hmm. It's five seven zero six four three five three zero eight. Or um, our website is. It's energy-spa.com. You can okay. find our whole uh, brochure there, like the kind of services we have and my services, and you can buy gift certificates online. And let's see what else. That's pretty much it, I guess. Okay, and, and I'll have the links <laughs> to this in my show notes and in my newsletter and up on you know social media as well, so anybody that's interested out there that may find themselves in the uh, Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania that wants to stop in as energy can uh, definitely check out what uh, they offer over there and meet up with Rose. I think it'll be a wonderful thing. So, yeah. Rose, I, uh, I want to thank you so very much for being on the show. If you want... Well... Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Dennis, for having me. It's It's been fun. Absolutely. And, and uh, stay on the line. <laughs> Thanks Let me for just... inviting me. Yeah, and, and hopefully we could do it again. I, mean, I think you've got a lot more interesting stories we can uh, yeah, anytime, um, talk about. I guess I can go on and on about <laughs> energy stuff because um I love energy work and mm-hmm. it's if I can help somebody, you know, in their journey towards it, you know, I'd love to talk about it more. Wonderful. So we'll we'll have to make this happen again. Do me a favor, stay on the okay. line. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh and close out real quick and uh you know then we can get back to it. Hang on one second, okay? Okay. Thanks. And there you have it, my friends, the interview with the happy medium, my good friend Rose. I've really enjoyed that discussion I had with Rose, and I'm hoping that uh, we can get her back on the show. She said she has even more stories and more details to talk about with some of her experiences that I I think you'll all definitely enjoy. Uh, You know, and this achieves one of the goals for me, you know, having somebody who, who actually does this for a living. She does it well. She does it regularly. And she said it there that anybody can learn how to do this. And, you know, this is one of those discussions I'm hoping makes the paranormal feel just a little bit more normal for us and supernatural, a little bit more natural. Because these are tools and resources that we have that we can reach out to, that we can learn to connect with in a positive way that can can benefit us uh, in our lives. So uh, I'm very thankful that I was able to get Rose on the show, and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, more things, more great things coming from her 
uh, in the future. So make sure you check out her website. I'll have that everything linked in the show notes at sixcentsmedia.net at servicechange.com and in the secret newsletter that it comes out uh, this Sunday. So make sure you sign up for that as well. So I'm just about out of time. A few more things I want to get to really quick. Uh, for my remote viewing cohort, if you're new to remote viewing, you want to give it a try. Uh, I'm going to give us the target coordinates for this week. Uh, basically what our process is, you quiet your mind, you relax, um, and you get yourself into that meditative state. But you don't want to be knocked out. You don't want to be unconscious because you're going to be doing some writing and, and, and really trying to connect with these data points here. I'm going to give you a set of numbers. Those numbers are target coordinates. You're going to write them down on a blank sheet of white paper. Uh, as soon as you write them down, you're going to put your pen to the paper and see what information comes to you intuitively. I'm giving you a quick overview of this. You want to try to write down colors, textures, feelings, um, You know, maybe draw some rudimentary sketches. You're not trying to tell me that you're viewing the Eiffel Tower, which you'd rather describe as uh, a structure, metal, sloping, gray, uh, You know, maybe people, their love would be an emotion that's affiliated with it. Those are the things that you want to describe. Like I talked about in the example earlier with my remote viewing session, you want to give the examples or the details as opposed to trying to identify the target because it gives, it allows us as the analyst to then go back and, and better match what you're looking at. So uh, I have a target prepared this week. Um, just in the interest of time this week, I'm not going to walk you through the, the meditation to uh, to set you up for it, but you can do that on your own. And just email me or message me your results, please, so I can track it and then give you your feedback and let you know what the target was. But here's the target coordinates. If you're ready, please write them down. If not, pause it and grab yourself a pen. This week's target coordinates from our remote viewers out there are 91241210. There's other shows. I'll have the links to it up at servicechanges.com. And I'm working on getting them at sixcentsmedia.net to explain a little bit more detail for those who may be new to this, uh, what it's all about, check out farsight.org. That's a wealth of research on remote viewing. If it's something you're interested in pursuing, they are indeed the experts on this uh, this work here. And uh, lastly, I'd like to close out the show with just a very brief meditation for us. I want us to just quiet our minds for a minute. If you're not driving, go ahead and close your eyes. And uh, I want you to picture that time in your life, that moment, that special someone, something that's brought you joy, happiness, love, peace, one of those positive feelings. And I want you not just to remember that feeling, but I want you to actually re-experience that feeling. Put yourself again in that situation and feel that sensation again. Feel it in your heart and then let it radiate out to your entire body so you're feeling those feelings again. Let it radiate out from your heart through your body out to the surrounding environment and let that go to the people in your home. Let them send them that feeling, that positive feeling, and visualize it expanding beyond your home into your local community and penetrating that community and surrounding everyone in that community beyond that to your entire state, beyond the state to your nation, and then envision that surrounding the world. That's the feeling that's going to charge up the energy. There's negativity in this world, but this positivity can change that negative flux and negative flow. It only takes 1% of the population meditating to make an impact. Let's be that 1% and bring about the change that we're looking for in a peaceful way. Check out the Maharishi effect, as I've said before, uh, that, that has done the science and the research into how this works My friends, it's been a wonderful episode. Again, thank you for reaching out. Thank you for participating in the surveys. Thank you for listening to the show each week. It means the world. Uh, To Ray Davis, thank you for all your hard work, my friend, that you're doing out there at, uh, you know, the Twitter feeds, on the Facebook feeds, behind the scenes. Ray's been putting up, looks like, an article a day at SixthSenseMedia.net. Ray, I'm sorry. I wanted to get some of them on the air this week. It's just been kind of crazy. We will get some of them out there next week. But check it out, SixthSenseMedia.net. you got a lot of stuff coming out of there from Ray Davis with the affirmation spot. He's also the author of Anunnaki Awakening, Facebook.com slash the Six Sense Media, and Twitter at Six underscore Sense underscore Media. I'm Dennis Nappy the Second. This has been another episode of the Secret Podcast, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning. And keep an open mind. Thank you. <laughs>
Lots more on the Secret Podcast. Check it out. Sourceofchange.com, the Secret Podcast. It's a great one.